I don't have a clever opening to this video, but uh, we're talking about Sonic. I'm going to start off with a few statements so stale that if they were chili dog buns, you could use them for drumsticks. Was that reference too underground for you? Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, Sonic's transition to 3D was pretty bad. 3D Blast is a terrible, awful, boring game. Heh, <laughs> you thought I was gonna talk about adventure. Fuck you, I like that game. Yes, the roadway style level design that's become a staple doesn't always make for the most compelling gameplay. Yes, it can be frustrating when it feels like they never want to stick with interesting mechanics long enough to refine them into something really cool. And yes, Sega's failure to address Big the Cat's part in France's bloody revolution in 1769 is something we have to hold them accountable for. Wait. Wait, hold on. Yeah, I think the French Revolution was in 1789. Full disclosure, I'm gonna lay out my history with the franchise right here. Barely touched 1, 2, and 3, played the fuck out of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine, beat Adventure DX, A-ranked almost every mission in Adventure 2 Battle, lost my save data and heroes after getting most of the way through the hero story and never went back, got three endings in Shadow and it was bad, touched 06 for about 15 minutes and it was bad, I wanted to like Unleash, but I kept dying on one ice level as the Werehog, and Child Meat just got too angry to keep going. I actually got pretty far in Black Knight according to my Wii's save data, but I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. Generations was cool and I wish I hadn't slept on it for so long. Also, I've only had the briefest of encounters with the comics, and I've only watched Sonic Underground. Now, depending on who you are, I've just undermined any possible authority I could have on talking about the quality of the games. So I guess it's a good thing I'm not talking about the quality of the games. I'm not here to add to the tired amount of treatises on Sonic's games and how the gameplay of them has been of inconsistent quality. It's been done. It's been done a thousand times, and it gets done a thousand more whenever there's a new release. All that could have been said on the topic? has been said, over and over and over again. The only reason it got the sub 20 seconds of lip service that I gave it near the start is because I really wanted to make that Sonic Underground reference and someone needs to hold Sega accountable for France. Now that that's out of the way, what are we talking about? Well, the topic of today's video is tone. Sonic's blue, Knuckles is red, and Tails is yellow. Done. Wait, but that's not- I mean the attitudes of characters, the atmosphere of the world, the way the stories end, and the overall mood that's presented to you. No one's gonna deny that Sonic has a tone that it's kept consistent since it started, with rare exception. Now, I am under no illusion that the scripts for Sonic the Hedgehog are heavily nuanced, complex pieces of masterwork. But I'm also under no illusion that that's the point. Thematic elements and motifs in Sonic the Hedgehog are simple, straight to the point. They always have been. They're here for one thing, and one thing only. To have an adventure. There has never been a moment where Sonic asks if what he's doing is right. Who's the true villain is a thought that has literally never entered his mind. You know why? Because the answers to those questions are clearer than a perfectly lit 8K feed of a polished crystal viewed by someone with 120 vision. Eggman is the bad guy because he is greedy and wants to control the world with his robot army and he is in love with how diabolical he is. While that Sonic Silent Hill post on Tumblr is hilarious, it's funny because of its absurdity. The games are not the least bit concerned with pursuing that kind of story. Sonic games are about a wisecracking hero who fights an evil scientist and no one dies and everything goes back to normal after it's over until the next adventure. Once again, with exception. It's got simple goals, and I'm here to cover how it reasserts them through every narrative aspect. Now, uh, let's make an important distinction here. Thematic elements and plots are not the same thing, because some of the plots to Sonic the Hedgehog are absolutely insane. Need I remind you of that time Eggman shot the moon with a massive Chaos Emerald Powered Orbital Cannon shaped like his goddamn face? But here's the thing about that. He's fucking dumb. And that's awesome. This apocalyptic sinus clearing is played straight, honest, and genuine. If you asked the game if it was serious, it would look you dead in the eye and say yes. Yes, I am. It has no qualms. It is not embarrassed about having that in its story. And I respect the hell out of that. This is the same plot that introduced us to an ultimate life form that for some reason is shaped like a hedgehog. The same plot that had ditzy Amy Rose break into a secure government prison like it was nothing to rescue the real damsel in distress, Sonic. Remember when Tails drove the tornado on the highway to catch up with the President of the United States so he could talk to him? Remember when everyone went to Egypt and then SPACE? 
And that's just Adventure 2. Remember when Amy appealed to a robot's humanity and it fucking worked? In fact, remember Gamma? Remember everything about the storyline for E-102 Gamma? Remember that time Eggman built an amusement park in space? Big enough to join multiple planets together? With working space elevators? Do you remember when Sonic was King Arthur? How about any time that Super Sonic showed up? And it was the hypest shit you have ever seen. I still think back to the biohazard fight and sigh dreamily. Back when I was younger, it's because it was the coolest thing ever. Nowadays, it's because of how batshit insane it was, in addition to being the coolest thing ever. Were any of these things very deep? Did any of them send you for a subtext-laden loop? No. But does Sonic need that? No. No, it really doesn't. They wear their hearts on their sleeves. It's very similar in spirit to what you got from the 90s platforms that built the industry, which, uh, hey, weird, huh? The plots have gotten arguably more complex, but the tone of this is an adventure is still there, just as strong as it was in the 2D games. So now we're going to focus in a little bit, go from the overarching plots to something a bit more fine-grained. Let's talk dialogue. The dialogue of Sonic the Hedgehog is not the cleverest, it's not the most naturalistic or the most fluid thing you'll find. It can be kinda goofy, sometimes, and it sure as hell isn't self-aware, it's not trying to be funny. What's up, Knuckles? Something bugging you? I said not trying to be funny. Okay, but that's not the same- Uh, hold on. My head's still pounding from the last go. He said go! Wait, what? <laughs> Will you let me talk for a minute so I can actually get to that? Thank you. Good lord, the height of a professional. These scripts are meant to be fun, not necessarily poke fun. They're wisecracking, not doing comedy, and there is a difference. Now this part's gonna be tricky, because I'm gonna try and break that difference down. Mainline Sonic's wisecracks? I shall prepare for you a lesson in respect. Painful lesson. Oh, someone's gonna get taken to school, all right. Are not Sonic Boom's jokes. Did you and he perchance battle yesterday? Oh, we battled all right. I remember like it was yesterday. It was yesterday. What well, was? I'm using two different terms there for a reason. Because the inherent point of the humor is different between them, and it's subtle. In Sonic Colors, when he has this exchange, Experience has taught me to investigate anything that glows. Experience has also taught me that the best way to solve problems is to kick robot butt. That's a wisecrack. The joke is meant to display confidence, make him look cool, witty, even in the presence of a giant robot. Now let's look at Sonic Boom. My trash should have been collected three weeks ago! Mm hmm. You're in luck. This is an election year. I'll take care of it immediately. That's a joke, because the intent was to create humor, not make the character look cool. In fact, oftentimes, Sonic Boom has jokes specifically at the expense of its characters looking cool. Even in mainline Sonic, when they joke about their own plots, they're not making fun of it. They know they have tropes, but they're not ashamed of them. This is as opposed to Sonic Boom that's more willing to have moments like this. Sidekick tryouts. All qualified candidates welcome. Best candidate gets the job. Resume and references required. Can you believe this? Because it's mainly a comedy show, it's more willing to make fun of the tropes. They're both acknowledging the tropes and laughing about them, but with different tones that allow them to take those acknowledgements in directions that are better suited to what they want to do. To try and visualize it, Sonic Boom is making this face, and Mainline Sonic is making this one. While I appreciate Sonic Boom, and definitely believe there's room for it in the franchise, the difference in tone here is why it's never going to replace the original. Its focus on comedy weakens its ability to effectively utilize trauma. How so? asked nobody, prompting a short but relevant detour. Well, Mr. Odysseus, Shadow the Hedgehog exists in Sonic Boom. To my knowledge, they've never even breathed the name Maria. And if they're smart, they won't. <laughs> you want to talk about tonal whiplash? This? <laughs> Maria! Cannot exist in the same show as this. Susie. 
He's only the second most popular character in the whole canon! Uh, let me get you a chair, Mr. Shadow! If I had to describe that in three words, they would be impossible to reconcile. While it certainly isn't barred from using it, drama is not what Sonic Boom wants, typically. Eggman's never gonna blow up the moon with an orbital cannon, is what I'm saying. Because of that, Shadow has to take on a very different role. Mainline Shadow is dead serious. There is no joke with him, and therefore, no place in Sonic Boom. The majority of the story can only exist in the mainline. This same principle holds true for the grim mission that Gam undertakes, killing his brothers to set the captive animals free, and the scene that Takal wakes up to after her father tries to storm the Master Emerald's altar, angering chaos, and resulting in the destruction of their entire society. Death and large-scale destruction like this are not things that Sonic Boom is prepared to tackle, and that's reflected in its script. Now, of course, I'm not going to deny that mainline Sonic can have lines that feel like they were, I don't know, translated from Japanese. I still dream that Sonic is with us. They can be a little weird, a little stilted. And while that's not great, the reason it's not a deal breaker is because it still fits the tone. It meshes well with the somewhat silly, dramatic stories that they're telling. And honestly, for mainline Sonic, if they were to ever try and make the dialogue read like an abridged series, it would come off as disingenuous. If Sonic were ever to say not this again with a legitimately sad look on his face, it'd be out of character. He loves fighting robots, foiling Eggman, saving the world. The fun he's having is a major draw of his character. And since we're on the topic of Sonic as a character, let's move into our final point. So if it's cool with you guys, I'm going to gush for a second. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. You know why I love Sonic the Hedgehog? Because he is just the coolest dude you could ever meet. Endlessly positive, never hides his emotion, never lies, never backs down from a challenge, especially when innocent people stand to get hurt, never turns his back on his friends, no heavy reliance on sarcasm or cynicism. Sonic is one of the most wholesome personalities in all of gaming. The worst thing you can say about him is that he's kind of irreverent. But that's obviously the thin, cool dude persona that you get from being a mid-90s to early 2000s shonen protagonist. At this point, it's just kind of aged into being an all-around chill dude who doesn't have a hateful bone in his body. And every one of his relationships shows this. Tails is his bro, his little buddy. Sonic is constantly nothing but supportive of the dude, and while he'll poke fun every now and again, it's obviously never coming from a mean place. Most of the time he probably doesn't even understand what he's talking about, but that doesn't really matter to Sonic. If Tails is excited about something, then so is he. Simple as that. Now Knuckles is also his bro, but in a much different sense. They're both hotheads. They play off each other like rivals should. But they're friendly rivals. And that's important. Sonic is just as willing to help Knuckles out as he is to talk smack. But he's probably gonna do both. Amy is a pain in Sonic's neck. But since the guy literally has all the confidence in the world and holds zero grudges, Annoyance is the most extreme thing he feels, especially since more recent games have kind of downplayed that, uh, dated aspect of Amy's personality. And when the chips are down, he has no problem risking his life to save hers. Sonic's relationship with Shadow is summed up pretty perfectly by my favorite scene in Adventure 2. They are complete opposites. Shadow's no nonsense, and Sonic's all about the nonsense. They're not friends, and they probably never will be, but they each have an undeniable respect for the other. And let's be real, if Sonic ever canonically learned about Maria in the games, he'd probably feel for the guy. Eggman's the main villain of the series, but to call him Sonic's nemesis would be... inaccurate. It would imply that Eggman elicits a kind of fixated hatred from him, and uh... he just plain doesn't. He's not denying that a megalomaniacal scientist with a literal robot army is a problem, but when Sonic talks guff to old Egghead, he's doing it with a smirk on his face. He's having fun when he's kicking Robotnik's butt. Sonic is capable of being friends with Chip. Now to put it diplomatically, I do not like Chip. To me, he embodies so many negative aspects of a sidekick character. At no point did the game endear me to him. Sonic is not only capable of tolerating him, but befriending and encouraging him. That's more acceptance than I'll ever be capable of. Even in Sonic and the Black Knight, and yes, we're talking about Sonic and the Black Knight for a second, 
When Merlina stabs you in the back and it comes to light that she plans to use Excalibur Scabbard and the power of the Underworld to keep the world in an unchanging state under her control, having lied to you the entire time, Sonic doesn't hate her for it. Sonic and the Black Knight takes place in Arthurian legend. Merlina is Merlin's granddaughter, and she knows how the story ends. The Knights of the Round Table destroy each other, Mordred kills Arthur, and the kingdom that she loves so much falls to ruin. This highly detailed knowledge of the end of life as she knows it terrifies her, and thus, she's determined to stop it, however she has to. Once she's been defeated, there's no taunts or jokes from Sonic. He goes up to her and said, yeah, change is scary, but it makes the now all the more worth it, and things gotta end so that new stuff can start. Does Sonic and the Black Knight earn this kind of profound message? No, no sir, it does not, but that's not the point here. In terms of character, this is exactly how Sonic would handle this. In the end, what this all boils down to, really, is that Sonic doesn't hate people. Doesn't matter who you are. Bullheaded echidna, edgy lookalike trying to destroy the world, monumentally annoying chipmunk thing that actually turns out to be God. Sonic's always more down to be friends than enemies. Now let's wrap this up. I made this video because Sonic gets a bad rap. That's not a new statement, and it doesn't come from nowhere. I know that there are valid criticisms to these games. But sometimes, it gets to a point where it sounds like there's nothing of value in the series. And that's just not true. Everything about the world of Sonic has always been positive and honest. From the story beats to the dialogue to the characters, it's never been interested in cynicism or angst. Just straightforward, let's stay positive, live our best life, help out friends, save the world, and have a good time while we're at it. Sure, sometimes it'll go rough, things might get a little scary, but believe in yourself, try your hardest, and nothing's impossible. And some people might say, ah, oh, that's so cheesy and shallow and toothless. Where's the grit? Where's the gravity? Give us something different, you know? To which my reply would be, you think that's one step forward, but it's two steps back now. The fate just keep chanting, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, that didn't pan out. The failure of Shadow the Hedgehog is a testament to how essential the tone of Sonic is to the series' identity. They went way too hard on the edge. How hard? Well, enough to give us this. I'm pretty sure they're trying to imply that Shadow just killed Sonic with a Glock. It's an M1911A1? Okay, fine, he still kills him with a handgun. The black and red color palettes for everything, all the dark, grungy environments, the swearing, these menu select sounds. You can help them blow up Central City, for Naka's sake. Why on God's Green Hill Zone would that be in a Sonic game? It wouldn't. And given that they've never gone back to it, Sega seems to agree. They know who Sonic is, both as a character and a franchise. And this ain't it. Sonic is an out-and-out -out good guy. The reason you've never seen another morality system in a Sonic game is because he would choose the good option every time with Gusto. 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 This series is about a wisecracking hero who does what's right, and a villain that he has to stop. The good guys might struggle, but they'll always win in the end. Hope is never totally lost. The power of friendship is the strongest force there is. And there's always another adventure waiting to be had. That's Sonic. And that's awesome.